feature presentation. We'll be back after a word from our sponsor. Watching Super Flick and eating all this great food. This flick is making me hungry. It makes me want to flick my bick. We should have gone to the drive in where we could eat and flick to our heart's content. Well, what are we waiting for? Well, come on then. I'm going to have a pizza and popcorn and ice cream. And I'm going to have a burger with fries and a soft drink. Yum, yum, yum. <laughs> this was a great idea. Going. Going. Yes, the 1960s Chevrolets and Corvairs are really going fast at your Chevrolet dealers. And the reason? He's offering money-saving deals to move out his 60 models to make room for the 61 Chevy line coming soon. It means this is your chance of the year to make a tremendous deal on the 60 Chevy of your choice. Perhaps you prefer a luxurious Impala like this. Or maybe your favorite is the economical Corvair. Whichever you choose, you'll get a choice deal at your Chevrolet dealers now. But hurry, it's your last chance to get a new Chevrolet, year's best seller. And the car of the year, Corvair. You'll get the money-saving deal you've been looking for. The ocean floor is unknown to man, except to our hero, the brave diver Dan. He's searching the depths of the seven seas. Now you may share in these strange mysteries. Quiet, you idiot. And how it made everyone's dreams come true. <laughs> Captain. Captain. What's the matter, Dan? When you shut off the radio or whatever it is that's coming through on the intercom, it's very distracting. What radio? We don't have a radio on. And what are all those voices? What voices? It's quiet up here. All I hear on the intercom is your voice. Oh, boy, that was great. What's going on here? I, I know I hear voices. And that's someone singing. But at the bottom of the sea? Maybe I've been diving too long. It seems to be coming from over there. Hi there, Georgie Porgy. Well, Felly, what's new? I was just on my way to visit the mermaid. Minerva? Yep. She promised to sing us a song. Oh, great. Well, come along. What did you say? 
I didn't say anything. Well, I heard a squeak. And so did I. Well, bless my gill and fins. A no fish. And a cute one. Oh, she's scared. Well, come on out, pretty little fish. We won't harm you. I'm Finley the Haddock. And this is Georgie the Porgy. Here comes Doc Sturgeon. Oh, good. Hey, Doc. Yeah? Oh, Finley. <laughs> How are you today? <laughs> well, I hope. Doc, look what we found. A cute little fish. Right as a coin. Well, bless my scales. <laughs> How cute. Wherever did she come from? We don't know. Oh, she's scared. <laughs> well, now, boys, on the basis of medical and physiological evidence, I diagnose her as a stranger to the reef. Is that good or bad? Georgie, you go tell Miss Minerva. If she agrees, we'll bring the pretty little fish to her. Right off, Finley. Yes, Finley, this little fish will require special care. She is not used to the life in the deep. Enemies like the bad barren barracuda would... Oh, don't worry, Doc. I'll guard her until Georgie can ask the mermaid whether... Hey, Georgie is coming back. Something wrong? I don't know. The strangest thing. What? A hard, round lump of water. Eh? What do you mean? A lump of hard water. You can't swim through it. Hard water? Swim up. See for yourself. Let's go. Why, I must be losing my mind. Whose all voices I hear. Diver Dan. Diver Dan, this is the captain. What are you mumbling about? I... I think I hear voices, Captain. One of them is singing. Dan, the pressure must be getting you. Prepare to surface. No, not yet. I've got to find out where those voices are coming from. See? It's a round lump of hard water, like I said. <laughs> the bright little fish is unprotected, Trigger. Yeah, boss. Don't call me boss. I'm Baron Barracuda. Yeah, you sure are, boss. Then call me Baron, you fool. Oh, okay, Baron, you fool. I see our chance to grab that new little fish. Now, when I give the signal... Maybe I... I am losing my mind. Where are those voices coming from? Diver Dan, prepare to ascend. No, no. That's an order, Dan. We have a lot of work to do in this part of the ocean. This is a scientific expedition. But, Captain... I told you it's an order. Yes, sir. We're standing by. Give a signal when you're all clear. All clear. <laughs> you know, what was that all about, boy? Uh, well, boys, I don't think it's water at all. It's not even ice. It's something that is called glass. Glass, huh? What does it do? Careful now. What's that? It's Goldie. The Baron. We've got to save her. Come on, men. Oops. Ouch. You're knocking off the ledge. Way down deep, three friendly fish saw a round glass bowl. A frightened goldfish hides in a coral hole. The friendly fish would go all out to help the pretty stranger. How can the bowl they found protect her from her danger? He moves among creatures of frightening features. Flashing teeth, flashing jaws, clapping fins, slapping claws. He protects and he saves his friends under the way. That's where you'll find Diver Dan.
When you know when there's deep, there's adventure and danger. That's where you'll find Diver Dan. The sights that he sees are surprising and stranger than ever you'll see on the land. The vicious barracuda waits the tiny fish to snare. Will he succeed in his plan? How will Goldie fare? Into the strange deep world below, a diving man descends. The mermaid tells the other fish that they will soon be friends. Come on, men! Ooh, ouch! You're knocking off the ledge! The Baron! Ouch! Curses! Hey, Doc, Georgie, look. The hard water is over Goldie. The Baron can't get her. Oh, what do we do now, boss? Come on, let's get out of here. But, my pretty little one, we'll be back. Oh, she's safe. The Baron has gone away. Who? thank goodness. Boys? The Baron will be back. We must get Miss Minerva. Right, Doc. The mermaid will take care of her. Is she safe inside there for a while? Let's go get Miss Minerva. Hurry! <laughs> I'll get her yet. What do we do now, boss? Not boss, Baron, you idiot. What do we do now, Baron, you idiot? That hard thing over the little fish is a glass bowl, like a glass bottle. Yeah? Yeah, and it'll break. Uh, break? Right, Trigger, that rock on the ledge, you can push it onto the bowl. It will break the bowl, then we'll get the little fish. Uh, Baron, stupid! You're smart. <laughs> but of course. Let's hurry. The Bishman Irving will protect the little one. I hope she's really safe from the Baron. Now, you shrimp brain, when I give the signal push. Oh, you mean the uh, push? Ready now? Oh, we're nearly there. Hurry, fellas. Manly, Doc, look up there. Who's suffering catfish? What's that? It's not a fish. It's a monster. I've never seen a fish like that before. It's a monster. Careful, boys. It may be dangerous. Be dangerous or not, we've still got to tell Miss Minerva the mermaid about the Baron and that pretty fish. Right. That and the little fish is in danger. Yes, boys, you're right. We need Minerva's help. Well, let's hurry before the wicked Baron Barracuda gets the poor little fish. Ready now, Trigger? When we push this rock on that glass bowl, it will break, and the bright little fish will be ours. Uh, ready when you are, Baron. Together now. Push. Mm. 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 Well, I can't budge it. Mm. Sure is heavy, isn't it, boss? Well, I'll try again. Whoops! Hey, what's that? What's that? What's that? I said, what's that? And I said, what's that? Oh, you mean that? I'm getting out of here. Sometimes, Trigger, your ideas have some merit. Miss Minerva! Miss Minerva! Why, Findlay, what's the matter? Trouble, Miss Minerva. Danger. The Baron again? Yes, but also a monster. 
A monster? Oh, yes, Miss Manaiva, with arms sort of like yours. But no tail. And a big, round, metal head. And a long, long snake from its head to the surface. A long snake? Arms and a metal head? <laughs> oh, boy, that's not a monster. Maybe, but it's no minnow, either. It's a human from the world above the sea. What looks like a long snake is a hose through which he breathes air. You needn't worry. It's just an ordinary man. But, well, he might be dangerous. Just don't get too close, boys. Minerva, we have other news. News? Oh, yes. A new fish. A tiny, pretty one. A fish from the fresh water. A cute little thing. The color of those bright yellow coins. Finley, you must mean a goldfish. <laughs> a goldfish, yes. <laughs> That's what she is. She'll need protection in the big ocean. Who well, I'll say. The Baron is after her already. That wicked Baron. Show me where she is, boys. Will the divers save the day for Finley and his friends? Can they stop the Baron's plot to gain his evil ends? But will the wicked Baron harm this fish of gold? Don't miss Dan's next adventure, which will soon unfold. He moves among creatures of frightening features. Flashing peace, flashing jaws, slapping and snapping claws. He protects and he saves his friends under the waves. That's where you'll find Diver Dan. Below in the deep there's adventure and danger. That's where you'll find Diver Dan. The sights that he sees are surprising and stranger than ever you'll see on the land. Diver Dan, our hero, is the good fish's friend. He'll champion justice right to the end. Dan has descended to search for lost gold. So please join us as these adventures unfold. help, Miss Minerva? I hope we're in time. Uh, the poor little thing has had quite a scare. And a uh, uh, very traumatic experience, I might say. Poor little thing. Did the Baron frighten you? But, boys, she doesn't look right. You said she was bright as a coin. Oh, she's not gold anymore. Not a good symptom at all. Dreadful experience for the poor little thing. Doc, can you help her? Well, seems to me she needs a, a remedy. She was bright as gold when we left her. Philly, I think that's it. Let's try some gold. Gold? Oh, there are lots of gold coins in Skipper Kipper's ship. Good. Big boys, go get one. We'll take her to my place. Hurry, Finley. As fast as I can, Miss Minerva. Oh, I do hope Skipper Kipper's gold will cure her. Goodness, what's this? What can it... Oh, of course. It's the monster. The human from above. Excuse me, sir. Didn't mean to bump you. What? D did I hear something? I said excuse me. But, but you're talking. Oh, I, I didn't mean to call you a monster. A talking fish. But this is impossible. But, sir, I'm in an awful hurry. I can't believe it. Oh, but I, I really am. I'd like to stay and be polite, but we must save Goldie. Wait, please. Oh, I have to hurry. Finley will be back soon. Doc, 
Will she be all right? I think so. I hope the remedy will pull her through. If we can just put her gold back into circulation, she'll recover. Finley must have the gold by now. Well, thanks, Skipper. It's quite all right, Vinny. You're welcome to it. Those coins have been cluttering up my focus all for months. If careful, son, I don't try to talk, you'll drop the coin. Yeah, hurry now. I hope the little goldfish recovers. It's that talking fish again. Hello there. Hello. Well, I, I guess I was imagining it. My fish can't talk. I wonder if I'm getting enough air through this hose. No time to talk now. I have to help Goldie. This coin from the old ship may cure her. Why, he is talking. And carrying a coin. A gold coin. What an adventure. I wonder where he found that gold coin. The old ship must be somewhere nearby. I do hope Finley hurries, Doc. Oh, oh, here he comes now. Oh, thank goodness. Now, Finley, see if you can get her to take some. Oh, it's much too big for her. Well, she can't take a pill like that, Doc. What'll we do? Minerva, get Sam the sawfish. He can cut off a little bit. Good idea. Sam! Sam sawfish! Uh, yes, Miss Minerva. Sam, would you cut off a tiny piece of this coin for Goldie? Uh, no trouble at all. Uh, not too big, Sam. Why, of course. That sawdust from the coin is exactly right. <laughs> Gold dust. Oh, great. She's getting some of it already. Fine. That should do it. Well, what's up, what? Shh. They've given the little fish some gold. Mm, but, boss, quiet. And I told you to call me Baron Stupid. Oh, okay, Baron Stupid. Ah, shh. Everybody. Watch now. Quiet. Oh, good. Wonderful. She's a comet. <laughs> Fine. Come on, Trigger. Let's go get that gold for ourselves. Oh, you're not even sick. Shut up or you will be. Come on. This is the ship that's laden with gold. The Baron and Trigger will head for its hold. Old Skipper's unaware of what is in store. So be with us next time when you will learn more. He moves among creatures of frightening features. Flashing, he's flashing, jaws flapping, he's snapping, falling. He protects and he saves his friends under the waves. That's where you'll find Iver Dan. any moment. Make it coffee. To enjoy that fresh aroma. Make it often. Make it up fresh each time in a clean container and for full flavor. Make it right. And here's how. For each cup of fresh drawn water, use one approved measure of your favorite coffee. That's all. One approved measure per cup. Satisfying cups of pleasure. A coffee break makes the moment right. Fresh aroma. Friendly flavor. Make it coffee. Make it often. Make it
Just an answer with this song. King size Coca Cola gives you that refreshing new feeling. That feeling, refreshing new feeling. King size Coca Cola gives you that refreshing new feeling. Get that feeling with the Coke, you get zing. Yes, Coke and the King has more for you. The great big value, best buy too. Cause after you pour, there's so much. King size Coke and the cola gives you that refreshing new feeling. That day feeling, refreshing new feeling. King size Coke and the cola gives you that refreshing new feeling. Get that feeling of the Coke in the king size Coke. Now Goldie's revived from a treatment of gold, which Finley has brought from the treasure ship's hold. But Baron and Trigger consort to purloin this glamorous fortune of bullion and coin. That must be the old ship where the talking fish picked up the gold coin. Hey, listen. That funny-looking fish is singing. Blow the man down, mateys, blow the man down, Jimmy Wave. Uh, I wonder if Finley was in time to save a little goldfish. Oh, blow the man down, mateys, blow the man down. Careful now. Uh, hey, boss, I'm uh, nervous. And I'm bad and barracuda. Are you sure, boss? Quiet. That gold will soon be ours. Ah, yo ho, me hearties. It's a beautiful day. <laughs> mm, I wonder how Finley made out. So what do we do now, boss? Uh, something nasty as usual? Quiet, you fool. You heard what Finley said. That old ship is full of gold coins. Is that good, boss? Not boss, Baron Stupid. Okay, Baron Stupid. Shh. If they want the gold, then I want the gold. So what do we do with it, boss? We'll keep them from having it. Isn't that enough? Oh. Isn't she the cutest little thing? The patient is fully recovered. <laughs> Thanks to my medicine. You mean the gold dust? Oh, gee, that's wonderful stuff. Yes, we should keep some handy in case the goldfish has a relapse. Finley and Georgie, why don't you ask Skipper Kipper for more gold coins? Oh, right away, Miss Minerva. Isn't she the cutest little thing? Who ever heard of a talking fish? But that was a real gold coin. Must be more in that wrecked ship over there. Can't move very fast in this heavy outfit. And there goes that talking fish again. Hey there! I guess they didn't hear me. Oh, there comes Finley and Georgie. Hey, yo ho, me lads! What's that, Skipper? Yo ho, me lads! Oh, and a yo ho to you, too. We wanted to tell you that those gold coins did the trick. They saved Goldie's life. Oh, yes, Skipper. Those gold coins are worth their weight in worms. The little goldfish is bright and pretty as can be now. Miss Minerva the mermaid is keeping her as a pet. I'm glad to find they have some value, boys. No, his plan to sweep out the old cabin, but, well, they had some use after all. Oh, I'll say. 
Goldie would have been a poor fish without them. See, Trigger? We've got to get those gold coins. You don't want to be a poor fish? I don't want to be a poor fish. So we must have the gold. Hmm, that's right, boy. Doc says I should get a few more. Uh, sort of keep them on hand. You can never tell when it might come in handy to have a little 24 karat gold around. That's right. Right on, my lads. I'll get a couple right now. Now, please, watch for our chance. We'll sneak up on them and grab all the gold. Gee, boss, you smart. How many times have I told you not to call me that? Whoops, I'm sorry. Uh, gee, boss, you're stupid. Not stupid, bad and you fool. Okay, okay, bad and you fool. Oh, never mind. Listen to me. When Finley and Georgie leave, you sneak inside the old ship. The skipper is old and weak. But, Baron, uh, when I get in a ship, I get seasick. And you get me sick. Huh? That's a joke. Oh, oh. <laughs> you, 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 you smart, Baron, you fool. I don't get it. One of these days, Trigger, it will be too much. <laughs> Oh, those will be fine. Uh, Georgie, you take one and I'll take the other. Uh, heads your tails, Finley. Careful, Trigger. Don't show yourself. Slink. Slink. It's traditional. Uh, okay, Baron. Uh, you slink? I'll slink? We all slink. What did you say? You're fine, my lads. Take those gold coins back to the good doctor, Surgeon Sturgeon. Hey, be careful, boys. Uh, blow a man down, ladies. Blow a man down. Oh, hey, looks like we're in for a bit of rough weather. Well, when I give the signal. Uh, to the pothole, boss? Yes. Now Baron and Trigger near Skipper do slink to sneak out the gold as quick as a wink. Old Skipper's not so alert as he was in his prime. Can he manage to shut the porthole in time? He moves among creatures of frightening features, flashing teeth, slashing jaws, clapping fins, snapping claws. He protects and he saves his friends under the waves. That's where you'll find Iver Dan. Below in the deep there's adventure and danger, that's where you'll find Iver Dan. The sights that he sees are surprising and stranger than ever you'll see on the land. Old Skipper has shuttered the porthole in time. The Baron and Trigger are foiled in their crime. We know they never contented will be until they've defeated our friends of the sea. That old skipper is crazy. He thinks it is raining. Slam the fort all right in my face. So oh, did it hurt, boss? I told you to call me Baron before. Okay, Baron before. Uh, what do we do now? We will wait our chance. When that crazy skipper thinks it has stopped raining, he will come out. And we go in. That little talking fish again, I think. Do you really talk? <laughs> I knew it was impossible. Fish don't talk. When they sent me through diving school, they warned me that the pressure under the sea would have strange effects. You can talk. But not with a gold coin in my mouth. Oh, I'm sorry. Now I've dropped it. Here, I'll help you. I'll get it for you. You're quite nice for a monster. A very polite monster. 
I, I'm not a monster. This suit I wear is even strange to you, I guess. Strange? I'll say. You have no gills, no scales, no, no tail. I guess if we saw you without that strange suit, you wouldn't be so peculiar. Well, I hope so. But I can't get over the fact that you talk. Huh? <laughs> well, little fish, the world is full of surprises. Excuse us, please. We have to take our goal to the mermaid. Mermaid? Is there really a mermaid? We think so. When we're not really sure of something, we ask Miss Minerva. Then please ask her. I just can't believe it. Talking fish, a mermaid. Uh, but who is Miss Minerva? Oh, she's the mermaid. Oh, oh, I, I see. Well, we have to hurry now. Uh, please wait. Uh, those gold pieces, do they mean anything to you? Oh, they're tremendously valuable. They're very valuable. Yes, I agree. Well, don't worry, I won't take them from you. Oh, you can take all you want. Goldie is such a little fish. Two or three will last a long, long time. You're sure there's plenty? Oh, well, Skipper Kipper says his ship is full of them. We must go now. Goldie's life hangs in the balance. If you'll go to see Skipper Kipper, Mr. Diver, he'll surely let you have some gold. The ship is over that away, Mr. Diver. Let's hurry, Georgie. See you later, Mr. Diver. There must be a very good reason why that diver is after Skipper Kipper's gold. These foolish fish don't understand. Uh, yeah, boss, I understand, but uh, what do I want with gold? Uh, I ain't sick. You will be if you don't shut up. To anyone of average intelligence, which of course excludes you, the diver's interest in the gold means that it is valuable. If it is valuable to him, then it is also valuable to me. Now, do you understand? Uh, yeah, boss. Call me Baron Stupid. Uh, yeah, boss. I mean Baron Stupid. Now, we shall wait our chance. The old skipper will go out for his daily exercise. Then we can slink into the hole and line our pockets after he has left the ship. Uh, what slink, boss? It means to sneak quietly. Uh, can I sneak now, boss? No, not now, you ignoramus. Well, this little squall should blow over after a bit. Then I can take my daily exercise. <laughs> well, clip my dorsal fin and call me Flatchop. What manner of monster are you? Are you friend or foe? <laughs> I, I may look like one, but I'm no monster. I am a professional deep-sea diver, and I'm very definitely your friend. Well, now, that being the case, hey, welcome, Mr. Diver. Hey, what can I do for you? I'm, uh, I'm surprised to find you can talk. Well, Skipper, I'm working for a scientific expedition to study the sea. We're running out of money, and the job is only half finished. An old Spanish treasure ship loaded with gold bullion and coins is supposed to have been wrecked around here. The captain has told me to search for it. If I'm not mistaken, this may very well be the ship. You mean it, this, uh, this yellow metal fluttering up my ship is of value to you? It may be very valuable indeed, Skipper. Well, then, uh, take it. With my compliments, <laughs> this stuff just gets in my way. Well, thank you very much, Skipper. First, I'd like just two or three coins to take topside so they can be studied by our scientists. Go ahead, my boy. Me you help yourself. Diver Dan and Old Skipper have met in the sea. Old Skipper now knows what a fine friend is he. Dan tells him the value and worth of his gold as Skipper invites him to take coins from the hold. He won't 
Those among creatures of frightening features, flashing teeth, flashing jaws, clapping, and snapping claws. He protects and he saves his friends under the waves. That's where you'll find Diver Dan. Below in the deep there's adventure and danger, that's where you'll find Diver Dan. The sights that he sees are surprising and stranger than ever you'll see on the land. Skipper Kipper invites Dan to enter the hold and take some samples of his unwanted gold. Little does Dan know what fate has in store as Baron and Trigger lurk by the door. Dan is unaware of Baron Barracuda's wicked scheme as he enters the hold of the treasure ship. The hatch is closed, cutting off the vital air supply from Dan's airline. To make matters worse, the evil Baron locks the door and steals the key. Within a few minutes, uh, I'm lost. But my, my oxygen supply is cut off. Who, who, who could have done this? This looks like the Baron's dirty work, Mr. Diver. Oh. How, how can we get this door open? <coughs> it seems to be locked. You just a minute, I'll see. Oh, hi there, matey. I'm sorry to say the hatch is locked and the key is missing. Well, I'll go get help and come back as soon as possible. Minerva, Miss Minerva, the diver's in trouble. The Baron locked the hatch on his air hose and he can't breathe. That evil Baron. He spells nothing but trouble for everyone. Well, why would he want to hurt the diver? Oh, please, Miss Minerva, there's no time to lose. If we don't hurry, it'll be too late. Sam, Sam, quickly, go with Skipper Kipper and help the diver. so the diver can breathe. We can worry about the lock later. And if you can hold out for another minute, Sam the sawfish will have your oxygen line freed. Oh, oh what a relief. Oh, oh thank you, Skipper. No, don't thank me. Thank Sam the Sawfish. Oh, hi there, Sam. Now saw around the lock. Oh, you saved my life. How can I ever repay you? I think nothing of it. Wait, 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 Diver. Don't forget your gold coins. Oh, 
thank you so much. And you may have all you want, you know. I hold it's cluttered up with stuff now, and I'd like to build an indoor swimming pool there. Uh, oh, I see. Well, I must return to my ship now. I'll let you know the results of the gold analysis. Thanks to Sam Sawfish, our diver is free. He takes his gold samples and ascends from the sea. What schemes will Baron and Trigger now plan to bring torture and grief to Good Diver Dan? He moves among creatures of frightening features, flashing teeth, flashing jaws, clapping and snapping claws. He protects and he saves his friends under the way. That's where you'll find Diver Dan. Constipation can be a problem for anyone. And when constipation occurs, it's interesting to see just what doctors consider important about a laxative they might use or recommend. Well, a majority of the doctors we heard from said they wanted a laxative that is effective, gentle, close to natural acting. A medicine that can be used with complete confidence. Now, x -Lax has been used with complete confidence by many doctors and millions of people over the years because... Pleasant tasting chocolate and x lax is effective. Overnight, it helps you toward your normal regularity. x lax is so gentle, so close to natural acting, there's no upset, no discomfort. So whenever your normal regularity is interrupted, you can rely on x lax the laxative that helps you toward your normal regularity, gently, overnight, x lax Space Control calling Quisp. This is Quisp. Over. An enormous mad ball of yarn is blocking all traffic in space. Uh-oh. So it is. Turn back. Impossible. I must deliver this cargo of Quisp cereal to my pals on Whoop! It's got him. A naughty problem. Fortunately, there's always time for a bowl of Quisp cereal. Use your Scrooge gun. Nope. I'm using these knitting needles instead. Knit one, pearl two, knit one, pearl two. Cast off, knit one, pearl two, cast off, knit one, pearl two. What blinding speed. He's knitting up that mad ball of yarn faster than it can unravel. There it goes. And in its place, a hand-knit necktie, 87 miles long. Yay! A good yarn, but Quake is better. Oh! No! Quisp is best. Get the point. Quisp. From Quaker. Below in the deep there's adventure and danger. That's where you'll find Diver Dan. The sights that he sees are surprising and stranger than ever you'll see on the land. The wicked Baron and Trigger are hiding in wait to snatch up the gold and pieces of eight. Skipper Kipper's unaware, now ready to leave. Will Dan get there in time, the gold to retrieve? That Skipper is still guarding the gold in that old ship. I, I'm scared. Uh, you think we're safe here? You're scared? 
I don't want a trigger fish to scare. No thoughts about it. Stick with me and you've got nothing to worry about. Finley, it's a lovely day and everything is fine. But you can never trust the Baron. He's always a menace. Ready now, when I give the signal. Minerva, oh, here comes Seabiscuit. Something's wrong. The Baron is attacking Skipper. He must be warned. I'll call him by magic telephone. Calling Skipper Kipper. Skipper Kipper. Uh, Minerva's calling on her magic cell phone. Uh, yes, Minerva, what is it? The Baron is after the gold. Skipper, quick, close the porthole. Curses. Minerva has warned him again. That magic cell phone is always getting in our way. Well, thanks to Minerva, that warning came just in time. Hey, boss, why don't we steal a magic telephone? Uh, then we, uh, say they couldn't warn out of fish. The Baron failed again, but he's a wicked one. We better make sure Skipper is safe. Careful now. Watch for our chance. Miss Minerva, even though the porthole is closed, the Baron is sure to force the door open. As long as the door can be open, there's danger. You're right, Finley. What should we do? I have an idea. Let's nail it closed. Careful now. Uh, you, you get it, boss. I told you to call me Baron repeatedly. Oh, yeah, Baron repeatedly. <laughs> I have an idea how we can nail a door closed. Let's call the Hammerhead Shark. Good idea. I'll call him now. Oh, no. <laughs> huh? Oh, okay, Baron, you fool. Oh, dear. Well, what can we do now? Well, we need help. We've got to get the telephone back. What happened to it? Who stole it? I, I wonder what we should do now. says that Diver Dan is coming down near the sea ferns. Or maybe he can help. Oh, good. I'll ask him. Oh, Dan. Minerva's magic telephone has disappeared. We don't know what's happened to it. Well, I'll try to help. But first, we must find out what has happened to it. Someone must know. Who was beside Minerva's throne? We were talking and it... Well, it disappeared. Someone must have seen what happened. Well, I don't know. Wait. Maybe old Gabby the, the clam could have seen. I'll go ask him. Gabby. Gabby, it's Finley. Tell us what happened, Gabby. Please. Please tell us. Well, Miss Minerva, you can make Gabby talk. We're sure Gabby the clam must have seen what happened to your magic telephone. But he won't talk. Old Gabby will always talk for me. Oh, please tell us, Gabby. Gabby, tell us what happened. Who took the telephone? Please, Gabby. Gabby, please tell us. Baron. Did you find out anything? Oh, yes. Gabby says the Baron took it. Well, that's all he told us. But he must have it in his hideout. And with you along, we're not afraid of the old Baron. You've got your knife. Hurry, Finley. We must catch him. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> now Minerva can't warn the others. The fish won't dare come in here to get the shellophone. If they do, they are in for a big surprise. Dan and his friends move on to the cave to strike at the Baron and trigger the knave. Miss Minerva's unhappy, overcome with despair. Can Dan regain her shellophone from this wicked pair? He moves among creatures of frightening features, flashing, he slashing, jaws flapping, been slapping claws. He protects and he saves his friends under the waves. That's where you'll find Iver Dan. The Baron has the magic shellophone at last. Diver Dan and his friends must recover it fast. They promised the mermaid they'd bring it back. But the Baron lures an octopus, our friends, to attack. With this small fish, the wicked Baron lures an octopus into the dark depths of his cave hideout. The hungry octopus now moves closer and closer. It's the evil scheme of Baron Barracuda and Trigger. The Baron now presses a secret button, forcing the trapdoor to slowly descend. Now the imprisoned octopus must do the wicked Baron's bidding. Here comes Diver Dan and his friends approaching the cave hideout. There's his place now. I'm sure he's in there. Oh, careful now. Dan will lead the way. We'll go in and we'll get the telephone. Curses. They have the diver with them. Come on, fellows. <laughs> Try and get it. You wouldn't dare come in. Baron, you might as well give up. We know you have it. We're coming in. <laughs> now, they are in for a big surprise. Careful. The Baron is full of wicked schemes. Watch your step now. Oh, and you're with us, Dan. The Baron doesn't stand a chance. Yes, but we can never trust the Baron. <laughs> My octopus guard will stop them. Dan, look out! Finley, George, danger, it's an octopus. Well, that Baron has an octopus guarding his cave. He, he's too strong, I can't get loose. We need help. Oh, quick, Seabiscuit. Tell Minerva. That wicked Baron. Now we'll never get the shellophone. <laughs> the powerful octopus has them stumped. The diver will never bother us again. What's that? An octopus? This is a job for Sam, the sawfish. Sam? Yes, Minerva. Hurry! Hurry, Sam! Now we can keep the magic shell phone. 
It's the sawfish. Yeah. Hurry, yeah. hurry. Well, that's it, Sam. Saw that tentacle. Where is it? Thanks, Sam. I can feel the octopus relaxing. Oh, thank goodness. Oh, but we, we still have to get the shell phone, Sam. You keep ready. If the octopus puts out another tentacle, give him the works. He won't dare put out a tentacle now. Curses. Hey, let's get out of here, boss. Ah, you forget, you idiot. He can now use his secret super weapon. Come on, gang. Let's attack. <laughs> The super weapon. Ink! The octopus has released the super weapon. It's getting black. I can't see. Now what do we do? That did it. The secret weapon turns out to be an ink so black that no one can see. Diver Dan must fight in the deepest gloom or else the ocean will become his tomb. He moves among creatures of frightening features. Flashing teeth, flashing jaws, flapping fins, snapping claws. He protects and he saves his friends under the waves. That's where you'll find Diver Dan. Light in the dark, in the sea black with ink. Our friends are so fearful their hopes start to sink. Never before has the end seemed so near. What fortunes face them to free them from fear? Oh dear, how can we ever rescue the magic shell phone now? We can't even see into the Baron's cave. The prognosis isn't too good. Are uh, you still there here, Baron, stupid? Quiet, you fool. My secret weapon has done the trick. Uh, yeah, that's great, boss. <laughs> hey, grab that fish. Uh, I got one of them by the tail. Uh, if you hold them by the gills, I'll give them a hot fin. Out! That's my tail you're holding, you idiot. Oh, uh, sorry, boss. How many times? Must I tell you to be to me as Baron Simpleton? Oh, uh, sorry, Baron Simpleton. Dan, I have an idea. We can send Sea Biscuit to Miss Minerva for help. She'll surely know how to combat the Baron's secret weapon. That's a good idea. Sea Biscuit, can you hear us? <laughs> sea Biscuit, do you think you can reach Miss Minerva and ask her for help? Pony in his big hurry. Dear, this is alone. How worried he looks. Trouble. Whatever is the matter, Sea Biscuit? <laughs> what? That dreadful baron has blinded Diver Dan and the others in octopus ink. Oh, dear. We might have known the baron would do something dark to get his own way. Oh. Baron, hip, bad, pellfish. 
glowfish. Oh, Gabby, how right you are. The glowfish is our only hope. With his miraculous head lamp, he can lead our friends out of the octopus ink into the light again. Quick, sea biscuit, to the bottomless pit. Summon the glowfish and lead him to the rescue. <laughs> You see, Biscuit. I'll be right with you. Just let me finish recharging my batteries. Carry on, see, Biscuit. Well, it looks like time is on the Baron's side. I'm afraid so. And I've known it to take many hours for this octopus thing to go away. <laughs> well, that sea biscuit rounding the bend. Look, look, he has glowfish with him. Oh, bless my starfish. <laughs> I knew Minerva would never fail us. Oh, glowfish, please lead us out of this awful ink. Wait, Georgie. First things first. Don't you think the glowfish should rescue the shellophone first and then show us the way out of this octopus sink? Oh, yes, you're right, Dan. Glowfish, the Baron and Trigger have Miss Minerva's magic shellophone concealed in the Baron's cave. Do you think you can snatch it away from them? I'll see what I can see. Well, glowfish, that's more than we can do at this point. Curses. More there. Fancy tricks. Uh -oh. mm, what the? What? what is that strange glow over there? Something is wrong. And call me Baron Useless. You're okay, Baron Useless. He got it. The glowfish got the shower phone. Well, now please show us the way out of this thing. Let's get the shower phone back to Miss Minerva as soon as possible. Oh, she'll be so glad to see it. Yes, the shellophone will be safe there. Now that Miss Minerva is on the alert for the Baron. <laughs> oh, boy. Are you all right, Glowfish? Why don't you fellas hurry ahead to Miss Minerva with the shellophone? Doc and I will make sure the Baron doesn't overtake you and get the shellophone back. Look, our friend the Glowfish is in trouble. He's collapsed. I was afraid this might happen. The tin water up here and that heavy shell of horn has brought on acute anoxia. Quickly, we must get him back to the bottomless pit. Yes, yes. But can we get him there in time? The glowfish has saved our friends from the ink. But now his life ebbs as it hangs on the brink. Will Dan and Doc Sturgeon reach the pit without strife? and bring the good glowfish soon back to life. He moves among creatures of frightening features, flashing teeth, flashing jaws, flapping, then snapping claws. He protects and he takes his friends under the wave. That's where you'll find Iver Dan.